Hello and welcome to When Should You Transfuse? My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care and Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So when we take a look at our red blood cells in our circulation, the purpose of the red blood cell is to be able to get to the tissue and provide oxygen to our tissues in the body. So you can see here we have lots of red blood cells, lots of oxygen getting to the tissues. We have normal perfusion that's going on here. We have a great perfusion of this tissue. However, what happens if the patient becomes anemic? We lose some of these red blood cells. Now we don't have as much oxygen getting to the tissue and the patient may end up having some tissue hypoxia as a result. So what is the treatment for this? Well, we transfuse the patient, right? Give the patient some red blood cells. Typically, we'd say that that threshold would be 7 grams per deciliter. So that's the threshold we've been using for quite some time. Why not 10 grams per deciliter? For a long time, we used to use 10 as our cutoff or our threshold for transfusing our patient. However, what we found is that that may not be the best idea. In fact, at some points in time, we've actually used a higher number than 10 for transfusing our patients. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on in the bloodstream. So here's our bloodstream here with our little red blood cells running around. And uh, we decided that, hey, this patient's anemic. They need some extra blood. So we're going to put in our catheter here, and we're going to give that patient some red blood cells. So as we give those red blood cells, now the patient has more red blood cells in their circulation. Fantastic, right? As we think we have more oxygen carrying capability, but it doesn't come without some expense. The expense is that the patient is going to have an inflammatory response to those red blood cells. So our white blood cells here now start merging to the area and the white blood cells are going to start attacking those red blood cells. Even though we've typed and crossed and all that other stuff, some of those white blood cells are still going to get activated and we're going to have an inflammatory response. Now that doesn't mean that they eat up all the red blood cells. Certainly they don't because we have an increase in the number of red blood cells. We can see that when we take our CBC after the patient has had their transfusion. However, this causes inflammation, and inflammation causes vasodilation to occur. So if you think back on all the different things that inflammation would cause to occur, we get vasodilation, and we're going to get capillary permeability. And lastly, we also get clotting. So these three things start to occur in the patient's bloodstream as a result of giving that transfusion. So even though we've increased the amount of oxygen carrying capability of that patient's blood, we've also stimulated an inflammatory response. Unfortunately, that vasodilation, capillary permeability, and clotting can then lead to the patient developing organ dysfunction. So this would be a major consequence of transfusing our patient. Now in some cases obviously we do need to transfuse patients because their hemoglobin level is so low but we do want to use it with caution because this can be the end result. So in this study we found that transfusing at 7 grams per deciliter did not improve organ dysfunction scores versus not transfusing the patient. So maintaining that lower level of oxygen carrying capability had about the same effect as transfusing the patient and causing that inflammatory response. So there's going to have to be a balance here as to whether or not we want to possibly contribute to inflammation or whether this patient really needs to have that extra oxygen carrying capability. So here's the reference for you if you'd like to pull it to Dr. Bosch and colleagues. Red blood cell transfusion at a hemoglobin threshold of 7 grams per deciliter in critically ill patients, a regression discontinuation study. Thank you for joining me for When Should You Transfuse? My name is David Woodruff. Until next time.